Hey everyone, this is Zach with 8020 Media here today with a video of some of the most common causes, fixes, and diagnostics for a vehicle and engine that is stalling. So just to preface this video, there are a lot of different underlying problems with an engine that can cause stalling issues. The issues that we cover in this video are not a completely exhaustive list of the things that can potentially cause engine stalling. Instead, we're looking at some of the most common causes of engine stalling. So hopefully this video is a good starting point to help diagnose the issues and give you an idea at the first places to start and look at if you are running into issues with your engine and vehicle stalling. Jumping right in, number one on the list, we have a bad alternator. The alternator on a vehicle is responsible for essentially turning mechanical energy into electrical energy, recharging the battery and powering all of your electrical systems, such as the radio, the windows, lights, so on and so forth. Ultimately, if you have a bad alternator, it also supplies voltage to the ignition coils, which the ignition coils then take that voltage and, and turn it up a few more notches in order to actually fire the spark plugs of the vehicle. But if you don't have enough voltage coming from the alternator and the battery, then the ignition coil will be unable to send the required voltage to the spark plugs to actually fire them and ignite the air to fuel mixture. So if you do have a bad alternator, it can completely cause issues with the ignition system and cause no fire, which in turn would lead to the engine dying and stalling out. If you do have a bad alternator, you'll typically notice a couple other symptoms and chances are if that alternator is bad, if the vehicle does actually stall out, that it probably will not restart with a bad alternator. But a couple other symptoms typically before the alternator officially fails or, or totally gives out, you'll start noticing a couple signs that it's slowing down and nearing the end of its life and a couple of those symptoms can include a dead battery so again the alternator recharges the battery so if it's not working properly while you're out driving it's not going to effectively recharge the battery which could lead to a dead battery you might also notice dim or flickering headlights or any interior lights lights on your dashboard so on and so forth and otherwise you might just notice slow or malfunctioning electronics like if you try to roll the windows down maybe the windows aren't working or they're rolling down very slowly or the radio could be cutting in and out or not working. So quite a few electronic related issues and malfunctions that can show up with a dead alternator or an alternator while it's in the last stages of its life. Ultimately, this boils down to the fact that once the alternator does fail or reaches the very end of its life, it will no longer be able to supply that required voltage to the ignition coils in order to fire the spark plugs, which is ultimately what leads to the engine stalling and again, likely not turning back on again. Moving on to the second most common cause of an engine and vehicle stalling, we have issues with the fuel system. There are quite a few different things with the fuel system that can cause the engine to stall out, but ultimately engines rely on a perfectly balanced mixture of air and fuel and ignition with the spark plugs to actually ignite that air to fuel mixture. And if any of those pieces are off, you can certainly end up with engine stalling. What it boils down to with the fuel system and issues that can lead to vehicle stalling is a sudden lack of fuel flow. When you don't have enough fuel entering the cylinders, you won't have an effective combustion, which can lead to engine stalling. So typically when you're looking at the fuel system, if it is causing engine and vehicle stalling, it's typically something related to the entire fuel system, so it's unlikely to be, say, for example, one single faulty fuel injector. And likewise, it's unlikely that all four or six or eight or however many cylinders your engine has it's unlikely that all of those would go bad at the same time. So fuel injectors are one of those components that typically isn't the cause of engine stalling due to fuel flow problems. So instead, this will be things more along the lines of a clogged fuel filter or high pressure fuel pump or low pressure fuel pump problems. Since those do supply or control the entire fueling system, it can certainly diminish fuel flow into the engine as a whole and all of your cylinders. And so again, when you do have stalling due to fueling system problems, it's usually not an injector or something related to one single cylinder, but instead something that supplies the entire fuel system with that fuel flow. So again, the fuel pumps and clogged fuel filter are two of the most common issues there. Now, one other thing worth mentioning when it comes to fueling, this is typically pretty uncommon and unlikely to get contaminated or bad fuel from the pump. 
However, it can happen, but more specifically, if you are driving a vehicle that's maybe been sitting for six months or a year and has old fuel in the tank, it's possible that fuel has just gone bad and is no longer effective enough for a complete combustion, a complete burn. So bad or contaminated fuel can certainly cause issues with engine stalling as well. However, if the fuel really is that bad, it's likely that the engine wouldn't even turn over and fire up in the first place but still something to consider if you are running into engine stalling and you know that you have old gas in the tank, six to 12 plus months old, then that is potentially an issue that's contributing to your engine and vehicle stalling. Moving on to another common cause of the engine stalling, at number three here, we have sensor issues. So kind of grouping a couple sensors into this category and just talking about engine sensors in general, looking at some of the specific sensors that can cause engine stalling, we have the manifold absolute pressure sensor, also known as the MAP sensor, as well as the mass airflow or MAF sensor. The throttle position sensor can be another common sensor that, that leads to engine and vehicle stalling. So again, the MAP, MAF, and throttle position sensor are three of the most common sensors that can lead to engine stalling. Occasionally, the camshaft and or crankshaft position sensors can cause issues with the vehicle stalling. However, those two sensors specifically will typically result in a host of other issues or may lead to a complete no start situation. So actually on two of our own vehicles, we had the crankshaft position sensor give out within a few weeks of each other. On one of the older vehicles, when the crankshaft position sensor failed, the engine would crank, but it wouldn't turn over. In the case of one of the newer vehicles with the faulty crankshaft position sensor, the vehicle was actually able to start, but it was stuck in third gear and had a host of other drivability issues. But again, that can lead to engine stalling if you do have a car that will actually start with the faulty crankshaft or camshaft position sensor. Less common than the three main ones, the MAP, mass airflow sensor, as well as that throttle position sensor. So certainly a couple of those sensors to be on the lookout for if you are running into issues with your engine stalling. Number four on the list here, we have airflow issues. So again, this ties into, as we mentioned, air, fuel, and ignition are really the three key components to keep an engine running. And so if any of those parts are off, if you don't have ignition, you don't have enough fuel flow, or you don't have enough airflow, it can certainly lead to the engine stalling. With airflow issues, really the main cause here would be a clogged or dirty air filter. If you haven't kept up with air filter maintenance, that is a standard maintenance item that should be replaced typically every 20 to 50,000 miles. However, it does depend on each vehicle and each engine in question, but a very basic standard maintenance item. So if you're running into engine stalling, just don't look over the basics, something like a simple air filter that's a $20 replacement. Go ahead and just take a look in the air box, see if there's anything that could clearly be restricting airflow. Some less common things related to airflow issues. If you're driving in a very smoky area or a road that has a ton of dirt or other debris or just air quality issues, that could also choke the engine and lead to it potentially stalling out. I know I ran into that once personally with a minor engine fire that fortunately put itself out and didn't cause any damage, but it occurred right near the air filters. And so ultimately when that fire had first started, the smoke had actually choked the engine of oxygen and it quickly stalled out. So again, just something to consider if you do run into an engine stalling issue where you might be around poor air quality around a wildfire where there might be excess smoke, or again on a dirt road where there might be lots of blowing dirt and debris, it's certainly something that could choke the engine of enough oxygen and actually cause it to stall out. But ultimately look for anything else that may restrict airflow into the engine if you have any pipes that might be blocked, any part of the intake tract or intake manifold. If something came unbolted or something is blocking anything in there, that can certainly restrict airflow and cause issues with the vehicle stalling. Moving on to number five on the list for common causes of engine stalling. This is one of the least common ones that we are discussing here and that is timing chain or timing belt problems. Most modern engines use timing chains, which are very stout and sturdy. However, there are typically plastic or polymer timing chain guides and rails that can occasionally break. And when that happens, it may allow timing to jump a couple teeth, which throws off ignition timing, which is critical to proper engine operation. And same thing with the timing belt, which is typically found on older vehicles. If that timing belt slips or fails or stretches, anything along those lines, 
You can also jump timing and that will typically cause the engine to stall. Again, that's a critical engine component. So if you do run into issues with the timing chain or timing belt, you'll typically notice a lot more than just engine stalling. Chances are the engine will probably not restart. And if it does, it will run incredibly poorly and you'd probably want to shut it off immediately. Certainly something to consider if you had a sudden and instant engine stalling and nothing else happened and then you fire it back up and, and things just seem incredibly off, it could be an issue with the timing chain or timing belt. Ultimately, if nothing basic is out of place and it's time to move on to some diagnostics, number one, use a code scanner or a code reader. These are very helpful since engines and modern computers store all of their engine fault codes in there and a code scanner can pull that up and likely point you in the right direction. If you have something like a fuel pump failure, you'll likely have a code indicating it's something fueling related. And same thing if you have a crankshaft position sensor failure, the computer will likely pick up on that and store a fault code in the computer suggesting something is wrong with that crankshaft position sensor, mass airflow sensor, whatever else the issue is. So really the most important part of diagnostics is starting off with that code scanner, reading the code, seeing what's wrong, if anything's popping up. Number two, consider what other symptoms you have. Does the car restart after the vehicle stalls or once it stalled, would it not turn back over? Is there a rough idle, any stuttering, hesitation, any other drivability issues or symptoms? Usually taking these things into account can help point you in the right direction. For example, if the engine restarts, it's probably not something like the alternator since the alternator wouldn't be supplying enough juice, especially if it got to the point of the engine actually stalling out. The battery wouldn't have enough juice to go ahead and get the engine cranked back over again. So just consider other symptoms and think about what that might tie into and what direction that might point you in. Otherwise, moving on to the next step, just start with the basics. If you don't have anything pointing you in the right direction, make sure the air filter isn't clogged. Make sure there's no debris anywhere that could be restricting airflow, that you don't have any serious fuel leaks or other issues and things that are obviously out of place. Do you have fuel? If you ran out of fuel, of course, that can cause engine stalling and likely the vehicle to not restart after that. If you were previously working on your vehicle or if it was previously at a repair shop and suddenly you take the car out again and it starts stalling, maybe you unplug the mass airflow sensor or unplug something that is causing the engine to stall. Main point here is, is don't skip over the basics. Just pop the hood and see if anything looks out of place. Unfortunately, if you get to that point and you don't have any engine codes, don't really have any other symptoms or anything to point you in the right direction. Otherwise, afterwards might be time to head to a repair shop and dive into more advanced diagnostics. If it's something that's above your level and above your experience, it might make sense to just head to a repair shop and at least have them diagnose the issue and point you in the right direction. Even if you don't want them to repair it, they can at least give you some insight and let you know what is wrong with the vehicle. Ultimately, that wraps up our video on some of the most common causes and diagnostics for an engine and vehicle stalling. If you guys appreciated the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out the description below for more. Thanks, guys.